Okay, uh, we uh, continue with our World Heritage Sites. We have been talking about the what is the process of the World Heritage Sites, and uh, we say that there are the twin criteria, and one has to uh, see what are the criteria, and these are the justification. Uh, we also talked about there are three uh, major pillars of uh, that outstanding universal value for inscription and uh, we talked about authenticity, integrity. We have not talked about so much about the authenticity inti uh, and integrity, we will take out that later, but this 10 criteria is what is today uh, focus of our discussion today. Now, as I told you, the OAV or outstanding universal value is defined through 10 criteria listed in the operational guidelines. I uh, will first take uh, all the criteria one by one and then we will uh, explain and give example. Uh, and it is very important to see how such a varied in types of uh, world heritage size or cultural properties and natural properties, how they are put under this 10 criteria. The criteria 1 to represent a masterpiece of human creative genius. Criteria 2, to exhibit an important interchange of the human values over a span of time or within a cultural area of the world. So, it can be a span of time or within a cultural area on developments in architecture or technology, monumental arts, town planning or landscape design. So, whereas the first one is the creative genius and uh, human creative genius, the second one is emphasizing on the interchange of the human values. Third criteria is to build a unique or at least exceptional testimony to a cultural tradition or a civilization which is leaving or which has disappeared. So, it is a testimony to a cultural tradition uh, which is still continuing or which has disappeared. Criteria 4, to be an outstanding example of a type of building, architectural or technological ensemble or landscape which illustrates a significant stages in human history and it continues the criteria 5, the fifth criteria is to be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement, landscape or sea use which is representative of a culture or cultures or human interaction with the environment, especially when it has become vulnerable under the impact of irreversible change. Sixth criteria to be directly or tangibly associated with events or living traditions, with ideas or beliefs, with artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance. The committee considered that this criterion should preferably be used in conjunction with other criteria. So, these six, the first six are to dealing with the cultural heritage and seven onwards is predominantly primarily the natural types. Criteria seven to contain a superlative natural phenomena or areas of exceptional natural beauty and aesthetic importance. 8. To be outstanding examples representing major stages of arts history including the record of life, significant ongoing geological processes in the development of landforms or significant geomorphic or physiographic features. Criteria 9. To be outstanding examples representing significant ongoing ecological and biological processes in the evolution and development of terrestrial, freshwater, coastal and marine ecosystem and communities of plants and animals. Criteria 10, the last one, to contain the most important and significant natural habitats for in situ conservation of biological diversity including those containing threatened species of outstanding universal value from the point of view of science and conservation. So, these are the 10 criteria, the first 6 are the cultural and the last 4 are the primarily with the natural and as we told that there can be the mixed criteria. Now, I will take up the examples mainly from Indian cases and if you go to the site and if you go to the 
uh, operational guidelines, you will see that it is very interesting to see that example of each one. Let us take the application of the criteria. Now, criteria 1 to 6 as I already mentioned is a cultural heritage property including the cultural landscape whereas, 7 to 10 is basically the natural heritage sites. For mixed properties, at least one of the cultural criterion and one of the natural criterion should be applicable. So, this half green and half yellow what we have seen as a logo and the symbol uh, that is come on the mixed properties. Criteria 1. Uh, in Indian example, I say that it represents a masterpiece of human creative genius and is Taj Mahal, I have taken the example. But it is not important to just say Taj Mahal is creative. We also have to see and these are very good learning example when you go to the uh, site, UNESCO site to see that how they are taking each and every example and how they are uh, justifying the criteria in context of that particular site. And this is a very good learning exercise. Uh, I think uh, when you see more and more of that, it will give you an insight to this particular objective assessment of these sites. Now, it, in case of Taj Mahal, what does it say? The Taj Mahal represents the finest architectural and artistic achievement through perfect harmony and excellent craftsmanship in a whole range of Indo-Islamic uh, architecture. It is a masterpiece of architectural style in conception, treatment and execution and has unique aesthetic qualities in balance, symmetry and harmonious blending of various elements. So, it is trying to see that how it is just not enough to say is a masterpiece of human creative genius. One has to justify that how in his architecture, technological and other things how it has taken. So, it is emphasizing these qualities or attributes and trying to see that how and why it is an outstanding example of human creative genius. And as I told you, I mean if you take a recent example, Sydney Opera House in Australia, Sydney is also comes under that category. It is a very modern example and you can refer the site and see that why under which uh, justification it has been inscribed under the category 1 and some of the goddess works also. Criteria 2 as we have already seen it exhibit an important interchange of the human values over a span of time or within a cultural area of the world on developments in architecture and technology, monumental arts, town planning and landscape. Human's tomb also comes under that category and red fort in Delhi um, uh, also comes under this uh, category. Now, how does it justify that? Criterion 2, in case of red fort, what it is saying the final flourishing of Mughal architecture built upon local traditions, but and leaving them with imported ideas. So, it was a interchange of uh, which came the styles of architecture, the knowledge and other and with how it interacted with the local tradition the and leaving them with the imported ideas, techniques, craftsmanship and designs to provide a fusion of Islamic, Persian, Timurite and Hindu traditions. So, that is why it is called the interchange of the human values. The rate for demonstrate the outstanding results that these achieved in planning and architecture and this is why it is uh, uh, inscribed mainly under uh, criteria 2. So, interchange of human value is the word one has to remember and uh, one has to see how in a particular example how it has demonstrated that. Criteria 3 bear a unique or at least exceptional testimony to a cultural tradition or a civilization which is living or which has disappeared. No, which is that? It is Jantar Mantar. Now, Jantar Mantar uh, in Jaipur, there are five Jantar Mantars there. So, Jantar Mantar in Jaipur is a world heritage site. It is an outstanding example of the coming togetherness of observation of the universe, society and beliefs. It provides an outstanding testimony to the ultimate culmination of the scientific and technological conception of the great observatory device in the medieval world. It bears witness to very ancient cosmological, astronomical and scientific tradition shared by a major set of western, middle eastern, asian and african religions over a period of more than 15 centuries. 
So, Jantarvantar is not just a monument which is to be preserved just like that. It is a testimony to this exceptional cultural tradition or a civilization and the valued scientific tradition. If we do not understand that, it can sometimes lead to a very adverse effect. I will just give you an example of Delhi Jantar Mantar. Delhi Jantar Mantar has been protected by ASI and uh, what happened, it, it, the site is protected because it, it is actually works as Sandal and many other study of the events, cosmologicals and other thing. Because that understanding probably was not there or what is not recognized, um, the NDMC building which is a high rise structure came in the very proximity of Jantar Mantar in Delhi, which actually cast its shadow and interfered with the working of those instruments which are colonial. So, it is just not some built structure, it has a function, it is a testimony to this the scientific tradition. So, after that uh, as I as far as I know the um, Delhi Urban Art Commission came up to see that it is not only important to protect or preserve the, um, the monuments, but it also is important to talk about it buffer zone and management. And that comes only when we understand that what is the significance and value for which it has it is important. So, uh, we must uh, sort of try to get into those uh, understanding the values and significance. So, this is the Jaipur uh, Jantar Mantar is a world heritage site, it is quite recently it has been inscribed and uh, it is comes under the third category. Uh, it also comes under the fourth category which is talking about outstanding example of a type of building architecture or technological ensemble or landscape which illustrates significant stages in human history. So, let us see what is the criteria which is mentioned in Jantar Mantar. Jantar Mantar in Jaipur is an outstanding example of a very comprehensive set of astronomical instruments in the heart of a royal capital at the end of the Mughal period in India. Several instruments are impressive in their dimension and some are the largest ever built in their category. And uh, as I said, uh, I am referring to Dr. Shikha Jain's presentation. She was uh, one of the key uh, person who uh, was um, involved uh, the, in the dossier making of that and uh, that was uh, a very good dossier and because of that we uh, got Jaipur as inscribed, this Chantar Mantar inscribed as the World Heritage Listing. So, these justification and following the criteria and how one particular uh, uh, property or a group of properties and other satisfy their criteria and also is outstanding in satisfying their criteria that has to be established when one makes the dossier and, uh, and that has to be quite convincing and with, uh, with a lot of example and uh, uh, justification. The fifth one says be an outstanding example of a traditional human settlement land use or sea use which is representative of a culture or cultures or human interaction with the environment especially when it has become vulnerable under the impact of irreversible change. Do you know what it is? It is a cave painting of Bhim Vidka in Madhya Pradesh, it is quite close to Bhopal and um, it is very ancient um, uh, cave paintings and this comes under criteria 5 and also criteria 3, uh, third criteria I think that it reflects a long uh, interaction between the people and also it is a very rare uh, example of the cave paintings and not only at one stage of human civilization, it actually has a document, I mean the people uh, who are expert in that, they could find out that the over centuries the cave people, prehistoric men came and contributed into the cave men paintings you know, with their technique and uh, with the depiction of their life and other in a very simple form. So, this is uh, along with the criteria 3, the criteria uh, on the criteria 5, uh, it is also inscribed as a world heritage site. Uh, the criteria 6 is to be directly or tangibly associated with events or living. So, it is an association with the event which is important with ideas or beliefs with artistic and literary works of outstanding universal significance and as uh, I have already mentioned this can be. So, in this particular example, uh, the red fort in Delhi which comes under criteria 2 and criteria 3 uh, because it is a symbol. What is the symbol? It is a symbol of power 
since the reign of Shah Jahan and has witnessed the change in Indian history to British rule and was the place where Indian independence was first celebrated and is still celebrated today. The Redfoot complex has been the setting of events critical to the shaping of regional identity and which had a wide impact on the geocultural region. So, it is not only is architecture, town planning and other or interchange of the value which I have mentioned earlier, but it is also its association with a long standing and it has become a symbol and is still regarded as a symbol for this it is the uh, association or tangibly associated uh, with a uh, long uh, history of India through uh, ages. Now, we go to the uh, the natural criteria uh, and uh, I am taking some of the examples from India again. The criteria 7, it is the superlative natural phenomena or areas of exceptional natural beauty and aesthetic importance. So, criteria 7, the Manish sanctuary uh, which is there and which is as, as, uh, inscribed under the uh, criteria 7. It is recognized not only for its rich biodiversity, but also for its spectacular scenery and natural landscape. Manush is located at the foothills of eastern Himalayas. The northern boundary of the park is contiguous to the international border of Bhutan manifested by imposing Bhutan hills. It spans on either side by the majestic Manish river flanked in the east and the west by reserve forest. The tumultuous river swirling down the rugged mountains in the backdrop of forested hills coupled with the serenity of the alluvial grasslands and tropical evergreen forest offers a unique wilderness experience. So, criteria 7, that is criteria 7 and um, later on probably I will, uh, you can also see this very interesting example of criteria 7 which is the uh, butterfly. Uh, you see for yourself, it is a superlative phenomenon that how the butterflies uh, goes and travel the continents and goes and this butterfly sanctuary is uh, on or this superlative natural phenomena which is also under the uh, this criteria in an international scenario. Criteria 8 is to be outstanding examples representing major stages of earth history including the record of life, significant ongoing geological processes in the developments of landform or significant geomorphic or physiographic features. Uh, I was searching for an Indian example which comes under this criteria, but unfortunately I did not find one. So, I had to take this example which is in Egypt, it is a well valley. Uh, which comes under this criteria, which major stages of earth history. Uh, probably someday we will have some uh, other natural site which comes under this criteria because it is an ongoing process. Uh, so, criteria 8, uh, this Wadi al Hitan is the most important site in the world to demonstrate one of the iconic changes that make up the record of life on earth, the evolution of the wells. It portrays vividly their form and mode of life during their transition from land animals to marine existence. It exists the values of other comparable sites in terms of the number, concentration and quality of its fossils and their accessibility and setting in an attractive and protected landscape. So, this is an example which is an major stages, this is important that when it is talking about the stages of earth history and represented through a certain thing. So, this is an example of the criteria 8. Uh, we will go back to the criteria 9. Yeah, criteria 9 is an outstanding example representing significant ongoing ecological and biological processes in the evolution and development of terrestrial, freshwater, coastal and marine ecosystem and communities of plants and animals. This is Shundarban uh, in the, which uh, partly is in Bangladesh and partly in India. Uh, it is an example which comes under this criteria of World Heritage Site and I will just read out the justification. The Shundarban is the largest area of mangrove forest in the world and the only one that is inhabited by tiger. Uh, the land area in the Shundarban is constantly being changed, molded and shaped by the action of the tides with erosion processes more prominent along estuaries and deposition processes along the banks of inner estuarine waterways 
influenced by the accelerated discharge of silt from seawater. Its role as a wetland nursery for marine organism and as a climate buffer against cyclone is a unique natural process. So, this process that ongoing ecological process and the biodiversity for these it is and these, uh, these trees uh, which actually uh, survive and they bring out their roots. Uh, this is a process and which is a tiger, it is a forest uh, which is a very unique uh, in this particular type of uh, environment and uh, this uh, becomes under the criteria 9 and we will finally see the criteria 10. Uh, criteria 10 is to contain the most important and significant natural habitats for in situ conservation of biological diversity including those containing threatened species of outstanding universal value from the point of view of science and conservation. Quite a few of the natural sites in India fall under this category. I have just selected one of them which is the Nanda Devi National Park. Yeah, it is a very long justification. So, I have omitted some of the part and I am going to read out that why it is important and how it is justified. The Nanda Devi National Park with its wide range of high altitude habitats holds significant populations of flora and fauna including a number of threatened mammals, notably snow leopard and Himalayan mast deer, as well as a large population of varal or blue shell. Abundance estimate for wild ungulates, galliforms and carnivores within the Nanda Devi National Park are higher than those in similar protected areas in the western Himalayas. The value of flowers is internationally important on account of diverse alpine flora representative of the West Himalayan biographic zone. The rich diversity of species reflects the valley's location within a transition zone between the Zangshar and Great Himalayan ranges to the north and south respectively and between the eastern and the western Himalayan flora. The entire Nanda Devi biosphere reserve lies within the western Himalayan endemic bird area or in short EBA. Seven restricted ridge bird species are endemic to this part of EBA. So, that is what as I told you there are quite a few natural sites in India. Um, you remember there are seven. So, they also come under this criteria. So, these are the 10 criteria which uh, try to see that how the criteria are very, very precise, very specific and they are very important and how one has to see that how each and every site is justified has been justified and put under this criteria. As I told you that there can be more than one criteria for a specific site, but these are a very good learning examples for these sites. I think later on I can take some of the examples of the international sites, but uh, uh, in some other discussion in uh, while talking about the management and other, but the one must uh, in go to the site that interactive site and try to see this justification process and see how objectively this criteria sort of has been framed and how each and every site is justified uh, in their they call the statement. The statement is not a very lengthy report, it is a very very precise, but the statement is a very important part. It is not a quantitative analysis, but how the statement is framed and how it is justified with supporting document becomes a major work of preparing the nomination dossier. So, as I told you that there are three pillars of this outstanding universal value. One is that the property has to meet one of the more heritage criteria. So, I talked about the 10 criteria, 6 cultural and 4 natural size and also the mixed property. Then I also mentioned about integrity and authenticity that what does this mean. So, I will uh, take out that integrity and authenticity to understand with some of the examples and then also what is very important and is becoming more and more important nowadays the management, the protection on the management that given the world heritage status how the state party can take care of this uh, protected or inscribed sites. So, this is uh, about the criteria and the justification. So, we will talk about, but also we must understand while talking about that, that okay, the world heritage site is international sites. So, they are internationally there, but there are also levels. There are some sites which are nationally important and some which are local. It may happen some of the local sites can 
go up to and be declared as a national lead protect some of the national protected side can go to the international level. So, there is a level what is important is that that criteria by in case of the international uh, world heritage site it will be the outstanding universal value it has to be internationally acclaimed. But also the national uh, protection also we have need to have this criteria to see that why they are nationally important and also same for the local. So, this level uh, uh, seeing the level and trying to objectively assess that is very important. So, operational guideline is also relevant for other levels also this entire process and justification. So, recognition by international committee is the world heritage site OUV that is very important to be inscribed. The protection and the natural national level we need the legal protection that is uh, uh, an important part when we talk in more detail about the legal aspects. And also again and again saying the management of all aspects of the environment resulting from the interaction between people and places through time and the management that becomes also a very important part when we are talking about all levels of heritage structures. So, this is a relationship diagram uh, which is terms of the interaction value and here you can see that there is a sort of a pyramid uh, which talks about the world heritage which is at the, the, the top most thing and there are other uh, things also which are mm, or no maybe not coming under this convention, but the Ramsar and other wetland conventions are there. There may be the regional sites and networks which is also coming under the category, there can be the sub regional sites. Uh, which are the transboundary areas which uh, can come, there can be the national sites uh, which is the national and under there can be different convention not only the world heritage site is one of the convention it can come and there can be the sub national sites also which can cover the different types of administrative boundary. So, it is not that there are some sort of a um, different overlapping areas and different way of looking at the site or the site having a different types of determinant or emphasis, but to this is a sort of a structure to give the hierarchy of the heritage sites. And, um, Uh, we have been talking about the management a lot, uh, we must understand that there may be one heritage site, world heritage site, there may be some are surrounding that there will be national aid protected site, there may be others. So, when we talk about the management, we have to understand that they not do not exit in isolation. We have to think about the local level, the regional level, the transnational level or the world heritage site, uh, they cannot be thought and tackled in isolation, they has to be integrated uh, uh, and seen in a th that way. So, like in this particular um, example what you can see that there is in a certain protected there is a context the, this is a non protected site and there can be the surroundings which are there and uh, there is some of the area which can be protected under a different status. Uh, their serial nominations and other. So, we have to understand that how this context is very important and what are the different legalities or different management requirement for that. So, we will talk about that in detail when we talk about uh, um, uh, heritage uh, sites. Uh, again I again referring that that these are extensively I have referred uh, their presentations and also from the world heritage site UNESCO guidelines and um, I thank uh, them because uh, these are and also uh, there are other uh, books and references which maybe eventually I can share with you. So, these are some of the things which has given me an insight to share these about the world heritage site process nomination and dossier. So, next uh, lecture we will talk about the authenticity integrity the second pillar and then we will talk about the uh, protection the management uh, and how these are very important. Thank you.